What's up guys? It's yo boy on the sensei back with part 3 of what if OC becomes Sasuke after the 4th Shinobi War. See x Sakura x Karen. If you enjoy my content, consider buying me a coffee. Link in the description. Like the video, share, and subscribe. Remember to check out the author of this fantastic fanfic. Link in the description. With all that out of the way, let's get into it. Sasuke's POV the barrier was shattered, unable to bear the weight of the attack. I and the others ride on the eagles made by Sai as we follow behind Naruto. We entered the barrier and saw a floating island in the distance. We went closer towards it and when we did so, shots were fired at us. Multiple yellow balls of energy shot at us. Their numbers reached thousands as we flashed in the sky, dodging. On the island was a citadel, many puppets were using some kind of energy-based cannons to shoot at us. Naruto in his Kurama avatar mode crashed right on the citadel, with a swipe he destroyed many of the artillery that was shooting at us, raising them to the ground. Charging a tail beast bomb, Naruto released it into the heart of the citadel. The island shook under the fury of the strongest tail beast, and the intense shock with that followed, knocked down the buildings like brittle sticks. Boom. Naruto was not messing around, he was a one-man army. He got out of the Kurama avatar, and let Kurama control it. Kurama let out a lifetime of violence at the enemies, every move he made crushed them all without mercy. Meanwhile, with the help of Sai and Shikamaru, Naruto headed straight to the castle to save Hinata. His steps were hurried, and he had eyes filled with determination that should not break. I gaze at their disappearing figure and wish them a stroke of silent luck. I ready myself to do my part as I fly towards a certain building. I made my way towards H-A-N-A-B-I backquote S chakra signature with Sakura. We arrived at the large building beside the main castle, and we got off a ride. Then we entered the building with a unique structure. We had no problems going up the floors, but on the final floor, we had many puppets waiting for us. They had the appearance of a child, and many different weapons were protruding out of their body. They moved systematically and robotically as they began attacking us. I aimed my hand at them and uttered, Almighty push. Crash boom. A great repulsion force shot out from my hand and blew apart every incoming attacker. The force moved on until it blew apart half of the building completely. Sakura turned to me with a weary smile, and I just told her with a shrug, I want to make sure they are all destroyed. We began our advance, and we soon found Hanabi in one of the rooms. She was lying on a huge bed with her eyes covered, she was also unconscious. Sakura immediately went to check on her, and she came to a terrifying discovery. Her eyes are taken, Sakura said in shock and an underlying anger. Are there any other anomalies with her? I asked, and she told me that she was fine everywhere else. She told me that they used some medication to keep her unconscious, but she would wake up soon if she was not given more. That bastard Sakura gritted her teeth as she felt H-A-N-A-B-I backquote S-I with her hands, checking if there were any injuries. Then everything shook uncontrollably, and the building was about to collapse. Sakura carried her nabi and we both made a beeline towards one of the windows. We jumped out of the window, and we began falling from the height. Crash. The building was knocked down by a huge golem right after we jumped out from it, and everything came crashing down. The golem was fighting against Kurama, and they left destruction with every move they made. They were like kids fighting in a city made of Legos. I used my attraction technique to pull Sakura and Hanabi towards me, and we gently land on the ground. Then I immediately made some hand signs and used a Jutsu Earth style. Earth Dome. The ground beneath us came alive, and it shaped itself into a dome that protects us from the debris that came crashing down on us. I used enough chakra to protect us from anything that might fall on us. A few seconds later, the sound of buildings crashing stopped and I opened the dome. Sasuke, I heard a call and saw Naruto and the others flying on eagles in the sky. Sai made two more and sent them towards us. Sakura jumped on the eagle with Hanabi in hand, and I followed the action, and we were all flying above the citadel. We hover above the citadel, and we watch Kurama and the giant golem fight each other. The place was in a continuous state of being destroyed, and they raised it to the ground. It was a disastrous display of might that made everything else seem lucid. A clash between sentient calamities that could not have resulted in anything else but catastrophe. Kurama gathered a tailed beast bomb, and fired it at the golem, with a speed that was impossible to do for the huge golem. EOW. The golem breaks apart like it was made of glass. 
but after only a few seconds the golem was regenerating, and it did so until it was fully restored. With a roar of annoyance and rage, Kurama rushes at the golem again. His roar was a shrill vibration that once inflicted fear into the hearts of his enemy. But his opponent was without a heart. His foe was a moving mountain with no fear of anything. The golem bulldozes toward Kurama with no emotion except a desire to please its master, Collide, whom they continued their barbaric brawl. Then suddenly, we all heard an explosion from the main castle in the distance. Boom. Amidst the chaos, Teneri clad in Tensigan Chakra mode, shot out and headed straight to us. His form was a bluish blur of speed that reached us in the blink of an eye. He stopped his advance a few good distances away, and summoned nine truth-seeking orbs in the palm of his hands. This can't end well. He aimed his palm in our direction, and the nine truth-seeking orbs changed their color to bluish silver. He made a rapid circular motion with his hands, and the balls followed the action and revolved around quickly like a wheel. Sliver wheel rebirth explosion, said Teneri, and at his words there was a vacuum in space. Giant streams of wind rushed around his hand to fill up the void, and the harmless air was reshaped to be a hurricane of explosion. It quickly increased in size, and the relentless hurricane shot forth towards us, tearing the very atmosphere on its way. I aimed both hands in the direction of the incoming calamity, and launched a literal river of repulsive force. It presses down on everything like a falling mountain, and manages to disperse the hurricane. Almighty push. Whoosh the approaching hurricane yielded to the unstoppable force, but that quickly passed. My attack was a burst of strength that nullified the hurricane, but only for a moment. My attack came to pass as T-O-N-E-R I backquote S attack reignited, and it burst forward at me with vengeance. The hurricane swallowed me, and I could hear screams of distress, before my ears were drowned with the angry cries of the wind. The hurricane swallowed all of us, and we were left at the mercy of the elements. We were thrashed around like dry leaves, and all of us were thrown away upwards to the fake sky. The fake sky was shattered, and we were pushed through it. Then it finally revealed its true nature to us, it was the crust of the moon. All of us were tossed away by the wind, and I got the short straw as my position was near to Neri. I ignored my worry towards the others and forced my mind to focus on my opponent. Teneri rushed at me, his speed was something my eyes were able to follow, but the body I possessed failed to do the same. I put my hands up to block the incoming punch. I succeed and block the punch, but the power behind it sends me flying away to crash on the surface of the moon. I planted my feet on the ground and slid on it to stop my momentum. My eyes caught a blur to my right, and I immediately bent over backward, and I dodge a light speed attack aimed at my head. Time slowed down from my perspective as I studied my opponent. Predictable I commented at the form of my opponent. Teneri was strong, he was fast, but he lacked experience in sudden movements. One look was enough to tell me that he was not proficient in combat. His movement and form were impeccable straight out of a textbook but they lacked a certain element that came with experience. He missed his punch, and now he was guarding for the perfect counter, the side of his body and his neck. If I were to counterattack with the best move in this position, he would have blocked. But that just means that I have to counterattack in a way that does not seem logically the best move. I plant my hands on the ground for a stable hold. Then I shifted my body weight and delivered a kick to his chin. My feet succeeded in connecting with it and it sent him tumbling away. He was like a baby. A baby with unmatched speed and strength that towers over mine, but a baby nonetheless. A Tajutsu battle between masters was more than an exchange of best attack and best counterattacks, a fact Teneri seems to be unaware of. Teneri stabilizes himself, and he sends a kick towards me. He was faster, much faster than me, but I was able to dodge it. I just moved before he did. He blasted himself forward, and we had a short exchange of Tajutsu that I dominated. His attacks were predictable, I just had to prepare for a perfect textbook attack. But soon he realized he had no chance even with his higher stats. So he shifted to range attacks. He sends multiple energy balls that destroy the ground with each miss. And I weave through them with ease. Then I leaped in the air and made quick hand signs, fire style. Fire burst. A huge ball of compressed fire materializes from my mouth and moves forth towards Teneri. The attack landed right at his location and a giant explosion followed. It was a burst of heat that ripped apart the ground. Boom I landed on the ground and the smoke which was the aftermath of my attack was dispersed by a beam of bluish chakra that came right at me. Few exclamation point tilde. Earth style. Headhunter then with a single hand sign I sink into the solid ground, avoiding the attack that tears away the ground. The solid mass of the earth made way for me as I easily traveled underground. When I was under Teneri I launched myself onto the surface. 
I caught the shocked look of Teneri with my eyes, as I hit him in the abdomen with Rasengan. T-O-N-E-R I backquote S body bends as I push the Rasengan forward. The Rasengan was a revolving compressed chakra that was created solely to demolish a target. Then with a twist of my hand, the ball of chakra launched out of my palm and it carried Teneri's body up into space with a sonic boom boom. With a burst of speed, Teneri was launched upwards into space. The thin air was disrupted, and a violent gust of wind blew my hair. Then the Rasengan fades away to reveal another ball beneath it, but this time it was black. It was a circular mass of void that disrupted the very space in its vicinity. I held out my palm and clenched it into a fist as I said, planetary devastation slash Chibaku Tensei. The ball became a beacon that forced all the debris and even the solid ground on itself. A mighty attraction force that beckons anything with mass pulling them onto itself. Teneri had no time to react as multiple rocks slammed at him. It was small at first, but soon gigantic rocks came crashing at him, burying him into the depth of their weight. I clenched my fist harder, and the thing became bigger and bigger, until it reached the size that deserved the amount of chakra I spent. A huge planet-like rock was suspended into the space close to the moon. But that was not all. I took out a few paper tags, and sent them flying at the suspended object. They stick on its surface before different seals flow out of them. The seals spread quickly and covered the entire surface of the circular rock in space. Baiku the seal was something that was mostly written on paper to make explosive tags. The basis of the seal was it turns anything it was written on into an explosive. The giant body of rock began shaking, and I could see bluish chakra leaking on the surface Teneri was escaping. Seeing that, I smiled and made a ram hand sign using one hand. I once killed a man who believed that art is explosion. Katsu. Boom. Sasuke's POV the thin atmosphere of the moon was in dismay. It was screaming and brutal gusts of wind boiled out from the explosion. The heat from the explosion ripped apart the surface of the moon and melted the closer ones into liquid. The ground quaked under the shock of the explosion. The explosion ended after a while, leaving heavy dark clouds in its place. I watched with close attention as the smoke slowly settled down. The dark clouds parted, revealing an angry and cautious Teneri floating in space. His body was surrounded by a void-like dome that slowly receded and shrunk in size. He used the truth-seeking orb to block at the last moment. I concluded. I was a little upset that he was able to shrug off the explosion which was enough to destroy a village. But he used a truth-seeking ball so, fair enough, I guess. Why can't a fight with the big bad villain end in a few attacks? I shouldn't have underestimated someone like you who possesses the Rinnegan. It was my mistake. He said as he raised his hand towards me. Multiple orbs made of the Tensigan Chakra spread from Teneri, and they span over the entire space. They probably numbered in thousands. I wouldn't make the same mistake again. He swung down his hand and at the motion, the numerous blue balls dashed 2145 as my eyes counted shot down at me with the speed of light. The attacks rained upon the ground, breaking apart anything it touched, destroying everything at the place, everything except me. I was already gone. I teleported myself at the mark I put on Naruto and instantly appeared beside him. He was shocked for a moment before he opened his mouth to speak. I cut him off and said, good luck. I saw his confused eyes before I tapped him on the shoulder and sent him to my previous position, which I had marked right before I left. The place right in the middle of the raining attacks which were not meant for him. I was not being an asshole. I am just a good friend who wanted Naruto to have the chance to beat up the person who dared try to steal his girl. I was not meant to defeat Teneri anyway. That was Naruto's destiny. I breathed a sigh of relief and I looked to my side to find Hinata who had a confused look that morphed into worry when she realized the situation. Will he be okay? She asked with worry. I was about to answer, but a giant explosion which boomed in the distance cut me off. The explosion seems to be coming from my previous position. I waited for the ear-splitting explosion to reside before I answered with a forced confident smile. I'm sure he's fine. Third POV he was not fine at all. That fucking asshole. Naruto screamed in his mind as he got blown off by a giant explosion. Naruto quickly stabilized himself, and his mind processed the situation faster than what most would believe. As his mind finished taking in the situation, he came to a single conclusion. Sasuke is a bastard. He wasn't something that Sasuke could use whenever he wanted to dump the troubles he did not want to deal with. Naruto would be more than willing to help him out, but there are manners. But at least he wished me luck, I guess. Naruto entered Kurama Sage mode, and his body roared to life. Yellow chakra flowed out and covered his entire body, filling him with nigh unlimited chakra and stamina. His muscles tightened as he felt his senses open up. He could feel everything. His demeanor also turned serious, and he created two Rasengan in both his hands. 
He used the Rasengan to repel away each incoming attack, as he slowly made his way towards Teneri. Teneri was confused at how his opponent suddenly disappeared, and how the man clad in yellow suddenly appeared. But he decided to just kill Naruto first, he really doesn't like him, so it was fine. Teneri, seeing his attacks neutralized, blitzed toward Naruto. His whole body was encased in blue Tensigan chakra as he launched forward. Naruto, seeing that also shot forward, and the yellow chakra around his body thickened to amplify his speed and strength to the limit. The two individuals with power that could level mountains clashed in the middle. The ground quaked as the air churned in distress. The ground below their collision cracked into a million pieces. The web-like crack spread across hundreds of meters. They pressed at each other, both of them refusing to give in even an inch. They stayed stagnant in the air for a while. They were in a stalemate before they both decided to end the futile clash that bore no winner. They pushed each other away and in the next moment, they blur out of existence again. The gravity of the moon was weaker than that of Earth, so Naruto found himself moving at a speed he had never reached before. They moved, their figure was too fast to be captured by the eye of the ordinary. They leave a trail of blue and golden flashes as they move, allowing the normal eye to follow them, but barely. They collided again and again, as they covered hundreds and thousands of kilometers in their clash. The ground beneath was shattered, unable to hold the weight of their clash. The open space of the moon became an arena for both powerhouses. It became a playground where they decide who was superior. They raise the ground, crush the hills, and shatter the mountains. To make matters worse, their clash only intensified as it went on. They beat each other to their heart's content, unaware that their actions were reshaping the moon itself. Naruto's forearm clashed with T-O-N-E-R-I back quote S for the last time before they pushed each other away. Teneri continued to float in space, whereas Naruto found a foothold on the surface of the moon. They paused and observed each other, giving a much needed respite to the shaken moon. The world created by the Sage of Six Path is a failure. I am destroying both the Earth and you. Teneri warned to stall time as he charged an attack on his left arm. The seven remaining truth-seeking orbs were corrupted by the T-E-N-S-E-I-G-A and backquote S chakra as they quickly revolved around his arm to charge an attack. Like hell, you will. I am not letting you destroy the earth until I become the Hokage. Naruto said as he also charged a yellow planetary Rasengan in his right hand a Rasengan with three small Rasengan revolving around it. They dash towards each other, and they both deliver their charged attack at each other. EO and ER I back quote S attack meet Naruto's attack in an epic clash that shook everything in their wake. Two cataclysmic forces cross paths. Destruction meets destruction. Power found power. And everything else was ripped apart to celebrate the event. Boom. They pushed each other forth, neither giving in to the other until the attacks cancelled each other out. This resulted in a huge influx of force that flung both of them in the opposite direction. Teneri as he was flung away sends multiple energy balls at Naruto. He was relentless, he was annoyed, he was enraged. Boom 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 Naruto bolts from one place to another, dodging the attacks and leaving the ground to suffer in his stead. Those he was not able to dodge, he blocked using Rasengan. Teneri continued his onslaught for a grueling six seconds before he stopped. Enough. Teneri screamed in frustration as he hovered above Naruto. His eyes bore down on Naruto with a hint of respect, but that was overshadowed by the rage in his eyes. The truth-seeking orbs he had used only to channel the T-E-N-S-E-I-G-A and backquote S chakra appeared in his hand. This time he used a single orb for his attack, while the others revolved around it to amplify the power. He then brought his hand up towards the endless space, and the six orbs spun above his hand rapidly in golden glory. The air hummed in absolute submission, as the orbs gathered and charged an endless amount of chakra with each circulation. Everything was bathed in a blinding golden power as space shivered due to its existence. A long golden energy shot out of T-O-N-E-R-I backquote S hand. Its height cannot be seen as it seems to elongate to infinity. It was a literal river of golden power that was meant to rip everything apart. This ends now. The beam flattens itself to take the form of a blade. The edge was so sharp it was able to cut the space in front of it with its mere presence. Golden wheel rebirth explosion. Teneri swung his hand down, and with it, the blade-like energy was brought down towards Naruto. The blade ripped everything apart, and Naruto disappeared in a golden flash. His status was unknown. The attack did not stop there, and continued cutting everything like the sharpest blade on paper. After an infinite long instant, the attack vanished into thin air, as if everything was a mere illusion. The loudest silence persisted for a while, before the lowest rumbling explosion took its place. The sound was such that it even managed to reverberate into the vacuum of space. A destruction never before seen. A power the celestial body could not bear. The moon was split in half. The ground was in a continuous state of tremor. 
Tanari had a content smile on his face as he watched the empty space. But that smile was robbed from him when Naruto and Sasuke suddenly appeared a few kilometers away from him. Sasuke had quickly appeared beside Naruto and teleported him away when the attack was about to hit him. I would have been fine even if you don't intervene, asshole. Naruto said, but contrary to his words, he had a happy smile on his face. I know you would be, Sasuke said as he looked at Teneri floating in the distance. Then his eye fell on the clear cut that split the moon. The cut was getting larger and larger, showing that the moon was falling away from each other. End this soon before it kills everyone, Sasuke told him as he vanished from his position like a ghost. I know, Naruto said to the empty space as he stretched his body around. He turned off sage mode and his body was only covered in the yellowish-orange chakra of Kurama. Speaking of Kurama, Naruto hasn't seen him after they were blasted away on the surface. Hopefully, he was doing fine with his opponent, the golem seems rather annoying. He looked towards Teneri who was flying towards him and flashed a smile. Then he got in a running position, and he blasted off towards Teneri, with a seemingly mundane yet frightening sentence. For those who understand the meaning behind it, first comes the gate of opening. Third POV he looked towards Teneri who was flying towards him and flashed a smile. Then he got in a running position, and he blasted off towards Teneri. With a seemingly mundane yet frightening sentence, first comes the gate of opening. Teneri stopped his flight and floated in the air, he could not pinpoint it. But there was something hugely wrong with the whole situation. He raised his hands and blue chakra orbs spread behind him and shot towards Naruto with sonic booms. Naruto's speed picked up pace as he flashed towards Teneri in a blur of swiftness. He slips past the shower of attacks as he persists in his advance. Then there is the gate of healing, Naruto said as he felt himself getting energized and filled with vitality. After a few moments, he was already beneath T.O. and E.R.I. backquote's position. Teneri became alert, and his subconscious mind was telling him one thing over and over again, danger. Then Naruto leaped up with a loud explosion that broke the sound barrier, and caused cobwebs to form beneath his feet. The ground was shattered like glass. Boom. After that is the gate of life. Naruto launched his fist at Teneri, but his enemy was able to block it with a black shield made of truth-seeking orbs. With the sudden stop of the fist moving with that much momentum, there must be a consequence. The consequence fell upon the air as a huge shockwave erupted from the clash, churning the atmosphere of the moon into a chaotic mess. They stayed suspended in the air in a stalemate. Then comes the gate of pain, Naruto said, and he completely disappeared, only to appear behind Teneri in a burst of speed so fast that the Tensigen was barely able to follow it. Naruto delivered a kick to the side of Teneri, whose body flew down on the ground like a meteor. He crashed and the ground broke open because of the weight of his fall. Crash the dust settled to reveal Teneri planted on the ground, stuck. He roared in a mix of pain and rage as he looked up at Naruto. A bright light covered Naruto as his right arm was enlarged by the yellow chakra. He mustered all the power in his body, and his muscles popped with endless power. Open gate of limit. Naruto roared out as his body surpassed all the limits it set on itself to protect him from harm. He was breaking through all barriers and limits. The sound barrier was smashed, and Naruto descended upon Teneri with the weight of a continent. He plummets towards the ground, yellow and fast like a falling star. Space and time itself bend under the sheer might of the attack, as it moves closer to Teneri inch by inch. Teneri erected a shield again with his truth-seeking orbs, but that was shattered under the weight of a punch. And under that massive power and weight, Teneri was like an insect crushed helpless. One attack dictated the life of Teneri Otsutsuki, and he learned quickly that he was a frog in a well know he was a man on the moon, who did not know the power that goes beyond his. The body of the moon was completely crushed and shattered under the might of the punch, and a quarter of the moon was blown apart into pieces. The display of destruction completely eclipses the previous one as the celestial body rumbled, forever traumatized. S-A-S-U-K-E-H backquote S-P-O-V the moon wouldn't stop shaking, and I couldn't blame her. It was a bit terrifying even for me. Such an amount of raw power was something to behold. Even I wouldn't be able to compete with Naruto in pure firepower if he goes all out. I don't think I would come out as the victor if I had to fight Naruto head on like a boxing match. Imagine staying in a specific area with Naruto, and he comes at you with murderous intent while using Bayon mode in the final gate. There is only a very thin chance of survival even for me. But it's a different matter if I was not limited though. There are still numerous ways to deal with him. Like teleporting him to the other side of the globe or into space. Maybe sealing him away or trapping him in another dimension. And if I wanted to kill him, it would be even easier. But the point remains. No one would want to fight Naruto head on. Rip at Satsukas. I hope you don't hate me too much for turning him this way. I knew it was not good to shoulder all the burden myself something my brother taught me. 
So I think it was a fantastic idea that I decided to make Naruto stronger. It was me, after all, that forced him to train the eight gates after whopping his ass in a fight. Yes, I had to get revenge for our last fight, and you might not believe it when I say, but he makes for a fantastic punching bag to train all my new jutsus. Like, do you know that K-U-R-A-M-A backquote S chakra coupled with H-A-S-H-I-R-A-M-A backquote S cell, allowed Naruto to regrow limbs that were destroyed using particle style slash dust release. I didn't. So the Naruto we are seeing now was purely because of my interference. What a monster I have created. And he would only continue to grow stronger as he learned to open more gates. He can stay in the state of opening the fifth gates for days, and could last nearly a day while fighting. No side effect except exhaustion could be noted till the fifth gate even though he finds it difficult to maintain sage mode during it. But I was fairly certain that would change as he opened more gates. Maybe he would be able to open all eight gates for a few minutes without permanent injuries. That would be really overpowered. The ground that was quaking uncontrollably finally stilled. And that pulled me out of my musing. I quickly readied myself and I teleported beside Naruto. Good job, you didn't even break a sweat. I said as I saw Naruto's relaxed and unscratched body. He he Naruto let out a cheeky laugh as he rubbed the back of his head. His face was a weird mixture of pride and embarrassment. I then looked towards T-O-N-E-R I back quote S unmoving body a few meters away. That was nursed right in the middle of a huge crater. That spread and thinned into cobweb like cracks. That span outwards till the eye can see. Ouch, I mentally winced as I imagined how much the punch would have hurt. Then the whole place shook again, and the moon was rapidly breaking apart. Go, find the others and leave the moon before it is destroyed. I will take it from here. I said to Naruto. He stared at me intently before he flashed me his smile. That seemed to light up the dark space like the sun. He said, good luck. Before he ran along to find the others, I watched as his form quickly disappeared into the distance. Then my eyes shifted to T-O-N-E-R I backquote S lying body. I could still feel the faintest heartbeat from him. I slowly walked towards him as I changed the path of my puppet from the diva path to the petra path. I felt T-O-N-E-R I backquote S faint heartbeat quicken as I got closer and closer to him, telling me that he was still somewhat aware of the surrounding situation. I stood beside his broken body that lay on the cold ground of the moon. The place would rumble and shake from time to time as the moon slowly but certainly falls apart. Let's see what you got. I said as I grabbed his head and began my procedure. First, I began absorbing his chakra which was more than I expected. It took me more than 10 minutes to completely absorb every drop of chakra from him. But finally, I was done, and he lay dead on the ground. No more breaths. No more heartbeat. Just eerie stillness that lacks life. I feel numb. He turned over a new leaf in the cannon he was good. I pushed away whatever I was feeling into the darkest part of my heart, and I continued my procedure and observations. His chakra was potent and more powerful than others. But there was nothing impressive except its huge quantity, which was roughly that of two tails even though he just fought. This amount of chakra is not possible to obtain naturally, even though he is of the OTSUTSUK I backquote S lineage. So I think it is one of the effects of the Tensigen. I was expecting a Tensigen chakra when I absorbed it, but what I was absorbing was really underwhelming. I guess the Tensigen can boost normal chakra into Tensigen chakra. Maybe like Sage Mode. Anyway. It was fine. What was really important was the strands of chakra that weave together with Teneri's chakra. The chakra of Hamura Otsutsuki. Now I have the chakra of Hamura Otsutsuki, and the only thing left was sending this chakra to my original body. I approached T-O-N-E-R I backquote S corpse and spread open his eyes, and sure enough it was not the Tensigen anymore. It was only H-A-N-A-B I backquote S Byakigan. I gouged them out of T-O-N-E-R I backquote S eye socket, put them in a container, and teleported them to one of the flying thunder gods marks back on earth. I was able to do this because of the huge amount of chakra I had, after absorbing that much chakra from Teneri, and also because it was a small slash non-living target. Next, I changed the path of my body again from the pre-tar path to the human path, and tore out T-O and E-R I backquote S soul, before I devoured it. I obtained all his memories as I did so, and I got to learn a few interesting things like... To obtain the Tensigen you need to fuse both the Chakra of the Direct Descendants of Hamura, which were the Atsutsukis of the Moon, and the Byakigan of the Hyuga Clan, who were also a descendant of Hamura. Like how it is needed to fuse Indra's Chakra and Ashura Chakra to obtain Rinnegan, you need to fuse HYUGA backquote S Byakigan, and the Chakra of the Direct Descendants of Hamura. But it's not any normal Byakigan nor a simple descendant of Hamura. Some special boxes are needed to be ticked, but that was basically how you get the Tensigen. Pretty interesting information. I shook my head to disperse my useless thoughts as I needed to focus on more important tasks. 
I gathered all the HAMURI backquote S chakra in my body which I was able to do so with my perfect chakra control, before transferring them to my original body, through the black receivers. It was normally very difficult to do so from afar, but with my chakra control and mastery over the Rinnegan, I was able to succeed in doing so. There was also no blockage in the distance between the moon and earth, so the chakra was able to move in a linear path most of the time, so which helped as well. The moon was breaking more and more apart, and I felt it shaking and rumbling from time to time, while I transferred Hamura's chakra to my original body. After I was done, I did not waste time before I quickly made my way towards the part of the moon, where Teneri had split it in half. After I reached it, I jumped inside the opening between the moon and began falling down in that widening space. Then I stopped when I reached the center of the moon. I was suspended in the space between the two halves of the moon as I quickly changed the path of my body from the human path to the diva path again. I brought both my palms together as a void in space appeared between them in the form of a black ball. I poured every little drop of chakra residing in my body. Before I opened my trump card, the strength of a hundred seal. It was something I had learned from Sakura, and it was also a way I counted my insufficient chakra. I had put the seal in this body to store my chakra, so I could keep controlling the body and not run out of chakra. This is also the reason why my body did not explode after absorbing two tails worth of chakra. All the residue chakra always goes to the seal to store for future use. The seal located at my heart began spreading like a tattoo over my body as I felt all the chakra stored inside wash over me like a broken dam. I put all the chakra into my jutsu until I used up all the chakra inside the seal as well. Space trembled as the black ball in my palm reached an absurd size. It was as big as my torso. The fabrics of space vibrated as I released the jutsu. Planetary devastation slash Chibaki Tensei. Then the first thing the jutsu did was tear apart my current body and use it to further increase its power. I have done my part. Third POV an unstoppable universal attraction force pulled everything toward the pitch black orb, beckoning everything with mass toward it. All the fragments of the celestial body were pulled towards it as the moon that was once split rejoined and mended itself. It was a frightening display, and it was even more frightening that a human was the one behind this phenomenon. The pulling force of the technique was such that the fragments of the moon that were already falling toward Earth stopped their advance and were pulled back by a stronger force toward the moon. The oceans back on Earth were also affected causing tsunamis. Then the phenomenon continued until the moon was fully whole again. A mortal had moved and restored the moon to its formal glory. Sasuke at Chiha returned to the moon in its orbit. Third POV mission accomplished. Sasuke said as he stood beside Kakashi. There were also scientists and other important officials nearby as they all watched in amazement the moon that was being restored to its former state. Kakashi then turned his head towards him, and with a smile full of relief that his mask failed to hide, he said, good job. Sasuke nodded in response before he walked away and completely disappeared in the next moment. Kakashi still with a smile on his face, announced that the Earth was saved to the others present and an emergency announcement was made throughout the Shinobi world. Emergency announcement to the whole world. The moon has been stopped. Five brave Shinobis, Naruto, Shikamaru, Sai, Sakura, and Hinata, have saved the Earth and its people. The whole world rejoiced and cheered under the full moon that looked rather beautiful. Now that it was not about to crash on Earth and kill everyone, people sang, most danced and the whole world celebrated. They were happy to be able to live another night and see another day. And there was also a couple that celebrated for a different reason as they kissed each other under the moon. Everyone was happy, but one of our heroes, who was not mentioned, was in great pain. Say S-U-K-E-H backquote S-P-O-V it hurts so much. I have felt pain all throughout my life, but the pain I was experiencing right now was pushing me to the borders of insanity. I thrash around inside the room that I have teleported into as I tear my clothes apart. It was one of O-R-O-C-H-I-M-A-R-U backquote S secret bases that I have used throughout the years. My legs gave out as my body responded to the pain by writhing on the floor. I took out my weapon and threw it away fearing that I might stab myself on impulse. Death seems small compared to the pain I am feeling right now. Then the pain bubbled up inside my heart, and some of the pain seemed to travel up my body and reach my left eye. Oh, no something was happening to me. Not just physically but spiritually. My chakra was a boiling mess that tore itself apart in an attempt to fuse with something. Of course. J-M-U-R-A backquote S. Chakra. Whose bright idea was it to absorb such chakra? It was me. Fuck. My mind became cloudy as my body flooded out dopamine and endorphins in an attempt to reduce the excruciating pain I was in. Everything was foggy and funny. It was funny. I already had some chakra of Hagoromo inside me. 
which was why I had the Rinnegan in the first place, and now I have acquired the Chakra of Hamura. Hagoromos and H-A-M-U-R-E backquote S Chakra, will create K-A-G-U-Y-A backquote S Chakra. This means I may be turning into what Kagaya Otsuchuki was. The pain was taking over my body like a cold-hearted thief who cared not for my well-being, and it pushed out an endless scream from my throat. It was going to be a long night. The next morning I was awakened by the stretch of silence in the room. The first thing I felt was the wetness of my body that was in contact with the ground. There was a puddle of wet oily liquid on the floor, and the smell they gave out was not that pleasant. I stayed like that even after I had woken up tired and unhurt. It was amazing. I never knew normal was this pleasurable. After the soul-crushing pain I had endured throughout the year-long night, feeling nothing was the most pleasurable thing ever. I wanted with all my heart to be forever stitched to the floor, but I couldn't. I have to move. I have to live. I pushed myself off the ground with my arms that was resisting me like a slave fighting for freedom. It wanted to give out. It wanted to stop. No. Move. My body had never felt so heavy. It was made of mountains. The world was chaining me down, but it couldn't hold me. I raised. Like all main characters should. Haha. <laughs> I didn't trust my legs to carry me. I knew they were going to betray me and let me down. So, I also used my hands to grab onto objects as I made my way towards the bathroom. I entered the bathroom and managed to reach the wash basin, and I stood in a fragile form in front of the mirror. My body was refreshed and no part of it hurt, but they were drained beyond belief. I looked up at the mirror and stared at my reflection. My skin had taken a bit lighter tone almost white but nothing too contrasting compared to my previous skin color. My body gained more defined muscles that seemed to be carved out of marble. I moved my body as I observed my muscle fibers that were like a steel cable pulling my limbs together. Then I looked at my eyes, one of my them was still the same, whereas my left eye which contained the Rinnegan was glued close by dry blood. I bent down and washed away the dry blood before looking at myself again in the mirror. Nothing. I said with a rueful tone. I saw that my eye was still the same purple with waves like ripples spreading out. It also had six tomo that made a pattern in the ripples. Except for the slightest physical change, nothing else can be noted as of this moment. I am not going to lie I was disappointed. I was expecting the Rinchuringen. I swear to god if this is all I had gained after going through all that pain. I am going flip out. But it could be that it will appear after a few decades. After all, Madara took decades to awaken the Rinnegan. It could be a similar case. I closed my eyes to get a clear feeling of my chakra and sure enough, I found two types of chakras that were knitting themselves together to form a new type of chakra. Good, at least it did not hurt anymore. It may not be as I expected, but I was gaining a new set of powers. I just need to have patience soon, I muttered. I didn't know if it was the exhaustion playing tricks on me, or if it was because I was too excited. But I think I saw my left eye briefly turning divine red. Three days later third POV the world was finally getting a little semblance of its formal way. People were returning to their homes. They began working and getting into their normal routine again. The only holding them back was the unnerved feeling that hid just beneath the surface of their heart. They were spooked about the whole situation. The many deaths and crimes that took place during the whole ordeal did not help either. Other than that the world was still spinning and revolving. Many were hurt, but time healed all wounds. Hard times had come to pass, was what everyone was thinking. They enjoyed their ignorance, not knowing that it was just the tip of the iceberg, while the rest were hidden under the depths of the ocean, ready to be revealed in time. But some people were not as privileged as the rest. Few had to suffer for the mass. Cage summit all the cages were sitting around a table as they listened closely to Sasuke who was standing in front of the table. Sasuke seems to be talking about some grave topic, as everyone has a deep frown on their faces. So what you are saying is, we are fucked. It was Anoki, the Tsuchikage who summarized what Sasuke had just said. Another cage summit was called again, three days after the defeat of Teneri Otsutsuki, and no one was pleased with what they had just heard. The Otsutsukis was soon to invade Earth. Sasuke decided to inform the whole world of this matter, as the future was not something he could be sure of anymore new variables appeared. The butterfly effect was working overtime, and fate seems hellbent on fucking him over. Every precaution needed to be made, and any help he could get was welcomed. Sasuke was giving the world a chance to fight for itself. Exactly how strong are they again? Tamari, the Mizukage questioned. Her mouth asked for an answer, but her eyes dreaded for an answer. 
The weakest should be stronger than a cage, Sasuke said as the whole room fell into a depressing silence. Terumi regrets even asking, how many? Kakashi asked, it was a hopeful one. Sasuke's stoic stare moved from cage to cage, building up tension that almost materialized itself. At least five or more, Sasuke gravely announced. There was a meaningless silence, and they let it stretch as they digest the information. It was like a lump of copper in the pit of their stomach. I am too old for this. I am too young for this. The cinching voice that belonged to Gara and Anoki breaks the silence. Kakashi also let out a heavy sigh as he sank into his chair. It's Satsukis, oh how much he hated that name. What do you think we should do? The rakage asked with his deep voice that vibrated through the dark room. We need to work more closely together. The shinobi union is not enough. We need to bring back the allied shinobi, and we will recruit not just the five villagers, but all of them, Sasuke said and the whole room fell silent. We share not only resources but military power as well. We fight as one. The whole world needs to fight for survival. The cages took in his words and contemplated. Then Terumi said, what about the daimyos? They need to agree to this. I don't care. Sasuke instantly replies with a sharp tone. The world is in danger, and the last I could care about are the opinions of some weak, arrogant cowards. The whole place fell into an awkward silence. The cages were stunned, they might have been angry if Sasuke was not the one speaking. It is not that simple. The daimyos hold absolute power throughout the country. If they disagree dash, Anoki said wisely before Sasuke cut him off. If they disagree or cause problems, I am sure I can convince them otherwise. Sasuke said as his right I briefly turned a dangerous red. You wouldn't. I will. S-A-S-U-K-E-H back quote S tone held a thread of obsession. It was a voice that held absolute willingness. Then the cages present were reminded that the person standing before them was not just one of the strongest shinobi to have ever existed. He was also an Achiha, the image of Ibito, Madara, and even Itachi surfaced in their minds. The Achihas are people who would go to any length for what they believed in. So yes, the cages are now realized he was absolutely serious. A weird chill runs down their spine. Never really liked the daimyos anyway. They thought to themselves before disregarding it completely in the next topics that they discussed. So, let's begin with the chakra cannon. Rakage, how can we mass the cage summit on how to defend against it? Satsukas finally began. It lasted two whole days. A common enemy brings the world together. It was not looking bright for the enemies. Say S-U-K-E-H backquote S-P-O-V. How is she? I asked Sakura as my eyes fell on Hanabi who was running in the garden of the hospital. She is fine for the most part. Her eye socket had already healed, so it was somewhat problematic to transplant her eyes, but nothing I couldn't handle. Sakura replied as she leaned onto me, and we both looked through the window and gazed upon the light-hearted Hanabi. I was not able to return her eyes immediately, because of the situation I was in after I absorbed HAMURA backquote S chakra, so I only returned it yesterday. I am glad to see that she was getting well so quickly. Losing your eyes must really suck, I can imagine. You know, she really wanted to thank you. She does. Yes, she said that you are not getting the recognition you deserved, even though you are the one who contributed the most to saving the planet. She squeezed my body at the end of her sentence, as if to say that she appreciated me even if others didn't. Well, I was happy to hear that, but I wouldn't really like the attention either. The recognition I was getting was more than enough. Sasuke Ichiha, the slayer of a hundred stars they had called me after witnessing the way I destroyed the meteors to protect them. As much as I tried to deny it, it was pretty cool. It sounds straight out of a cultivation novel, and weirdly enough, a part of me really liked that. She's a good girl. I said with a smile, to which Sakura just nodded with tight lips. Sakura snuggled closer to me like the affection monster she was, and sought my warmth. Her head swayed from side to side as she looked everywhere but me. She looks like she is expecting something, but she tries to hide it, which makes it more obvious. After a while, she even starts humming in a small feminine tone, and her eyelashes sweep suggestively. Oh, this girl a realization hit me, and I can't help but mentally sigh in amusement. I was a bit flustered. But as a man I tried to look confident, and with rigid movements that should not come from a shinobi like me. I pulled her on me. I shuffled behind her and hugged her from behind, my hands snaked down from her shoulder, and I pulled her in. Then I said, why you are also a good girl. I think I blushed when I said that, but she wouldn't be able to see me, so it was fine. Hey, Sakura's confused tone throws me in for a loop. Hey, I joined her confusion and I saw her is turning beet red. Wait. Was she not expecting a compliment? I thought she was jealous and wanted me to praise her too. No way. Don't tell me she was expecting a kiss. Realizing that, 
I moved in to kiss her in a lame attempt to save the situation, but my lips couldn't reach her as I stood behind her. I ended up missing her lips and kissed her on the side of her nose. T-H-E tilde a small laugh slipped out of her before she blocked her lips with her hands. I slowly pulled my head back in defeat. I tightened my grasp on her to make sure she didn't turn around. I could not let her see the state I was in. I am sure I was a blushing mess, and I can't let her see that. Sakura's body started shaking as she tried to stifle a laugh from escaping. It was then that I noticed that my reflection could be seen from the glass of the window. No, ha 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 ha. She couldn't hold it anymore as a healthy peal of laughter left her lips, and she turned around to hug me. Even though I was embarrassed I was happy if she was, that was the point of all my actions anyway. So I joined her laughter. We stood there in each other's embrace for a long time as we took in each other's presence. She quickly managed to make me comfortable, and we shared a moment together. But sadly it inevitably came to an end. I felt a tug on my chakra, and I looked at my palm as a few seals materialized on it. This isn't good sorry. I have to go. I told her with reluctance. I got out of Sakura's grasp and moved away from the window. My body tensed up, and my heartbeat quickened like a machine roaring to life. My mind nipped out all smoldering thoughts as it prepared itself for battle. Good luck, Sakura said as I walked with a quickening pace away from her. The chakra of the five tails, Kokua was getting chaotic. It could mean many things, but it could also mean that the beast was fighting or at least struggling. Are they already on the move? I questioned as I disappeared from my place and teleported to the location of Kokua. Time skip, 1.5 years third POV. It has been one and a half years since the day Sasuke had restored the moon, and nearly four years since the new Sasuke had emerged. The span of one and a half years proved to be chaotic. The battle against the Atsutsukis began small, but it soon gained intensity like a forest fire. The Shinobi village's main priority was protecting the people in the Biju, whereas powerhouses like Sasuke and Naruto were the ones that dealt with the Atsutsukis. The fights that sometimes occur leave countries in absolute shambles. Sasuke would usually take the fights in other dimensions, but some fight in his home dimension was unavoidable, especially after the enemy found out that he cared for the people. But Sasuke alone was more than strong enough to deal with any Otsutsuki that challenged him head on. Once the enemy figured out that Sasuke was stronger than all of them in one-on-one -on -one battles, they teamed up. The enemies who thought of themselves as gods were forced to team up to fight against someone they considered an ant. It infuriated them to no end. Kinshiki Otsutsuki, Momoshiki Otsutsuki, Isiki Otsutsuki, Yurishiki Otsutsuki, Ryushiki Otsutsuki, Yabai Otsutsuki, Tamaya Otsutsuki. These were all the Otsutsukis that Sasuke was fighting against. He realized at some point that his world was different from the one from his knowledge. If he were to describe it, he would say it's an AU. The difference is the new Atsutsukis and their earlier attacks on Earth. It was quite infuriating for him, but it makes him wonder if this was the reason he changed the way he did. Was the whole reincarnation and soul fusing thing a way for the world to balance things out? Since the enemies were more powerful, he did not know but it seems likely. The Atsutsukis teamed up to fight against him, but with the help of every shinobi village in Naruto, he was able to fight them off just fine. The war continues, the war between the world and the celestial clan. It was mind-blowing how many incidents and battles happened in the stretch of a year and a half. The current age was even called the Age of Disasters, starting from the Fourth Shinobi War, the Falling Moon, and now the battle against the alien gods. But that was finally nearing its end. The Atsutsukis had been lying low for more than a month now, and Sasuke with the others cornered them inside a cave located in the Land of Snow. Is everyone in position? Sasuke asked as he watched the mountain in the distance, which was the hideout of the Atsutsukis. Yes, the Chakra Cannons are ready, and the other troops including the Suicide Corps, are stationed around the mountain. Eno's answer came inside his head. The troops were more or less all cage-level Shinobis, consisting of the village cages and some reanimated Shinobis. They wouldn't defeat the enemy but they would be more than capable of putting up a fight. The Suicide Corps on the other hand consists of Tejutsu users led by Rock Lee. They were trained to use the Eight Gates and are ready to die using it any time. How is the seal holding up? Sasuke asked again, to which Ino answered that it was standing strong and the enemies were completely trapped. That's good, Sasuke said, but his tone betrayed the words he spoke. This was way too suspicious. Not only were the enemy all in the same place, but the Atsutsukis were staying still while they were surrounding them. It's too good to be true. Sasuke knew as much as he knew himself that the enemies were up to something. He didn't know what. He just hoped that he prepared enough. Ready Naruto. Sasuke asked his friend, who had always stood beside him. They had faced the enemy together since the beginning. Let's end this. Naruto replied, determined. After that, they both sprint towards the enemy. 
They closed the distance in mere seconds as they entered the cave that was the enemy's hideout. There was something wrong. The feeling lingered on the bottom of their throat, and then it sank deeper and deeper as they neared their enemy, until the feeling became a ball of unease at the pit of their stomach. There was no ambush, no attacks, no retaliation. What the hell is going on? Then they finally reached the core of the hideout, where a bright light was flashing with such intensity that the surrounding space was bending. Gravity was messed up. They came upon the Atsutsukis who stood in a circle, all seven of them. Sparks could be seen crackling around, and the bright light seemed to blend with them. But unseen by the normal eyes, something much more was happening. Sasuke with his Rinnegan was able to see everything that was happening. The area where the Atsutsukis stood was filled with chakras so massive that its mass weighted on the space-time fabrics and bent them. At the center of it was an artifact that told Sasuke exactly what was going on. The artifact was Karasuki. How did they get their hands on that? The Atsutsukis were trying to travel back in time, or maybe they were doing something much more considering the amount of chakra used. Whatever it was, he couldn't let them do as they wished. Naruto shot forward, but he couldn't even reach them as he was unable to pass through a shield of some sort that surrounded the Atsutsukis. It's too late to stop us now, Yurishiki said with the widest smile. But the smile immediately turned upside down when Sasuke suddenly appeared before him using the Flying Thunder God. And it's too early for you to say that, Sasuke said as he delivered a clean uppercut that smashed together Uriashiki backquote's teeth. Sasuke immediately moved back and stood right at the center, where he was surrounded by the enemy from all sides. The artifact was right beside him, shining. But before the other Itsutsukis could react a blinding golden flash from the artifact stopped them, and after the intense light subsided, they were all gone from their position. Naruto stood alone, stunned and confused. The place was a void where time and space were in absolute chaos. There was no order as time twisted or even flowed backward. Space was not as it should have been, as one wouldn't be able to tell the directions. Something that seems near maybe light years away. Myriads of colors seemingly dissolve around the surroundings as cube-like projections float here and there. At the center of this chaotic dimension where logic had far gone astray. There was a platform that was not affected by the nonsensical laws of the dimension. On that platform, there are eight people. Seven of the Atsutsukis were standing in a circle, and right in the middle was their greatest foe, Sasuke Achiha. Sasuke stood with a straight posture, his face held absolute indifference even though he was surrounded by his enemies. It was as if everything was under his control, which could not have been more further from the truth as Sasuke was panicking internally. His sharp mind worked quickly to come up with a way to deal with the current situation. There was stillness and silence in that chaotic dimension where time and space obeyed no laws. The Atsutsukis all looked at him with cold eyes as they were also confused about what to do. This was not part of their plan and they were low on chakra, years of fighting against Sasuke made them extremely wary of him. Sasuke quickly chopped up a shabby plan in his mind, and for that, he needed to buy some time. And that's what he did. You should all surrender, Sasuke spoke with the confidence of a victor. Because you are all surrounded, he said to them with certainty, even though the situation was the complete opposite. But his serious face would make anyone have second thoughts. One of them even looked around to check whether they were really surrounded, while the rest looked at him with narrowed eyes, unamused. Lies. Isiki said, his voice deep and almost rumbling. You are the one in trouble, Ichiha. Sasuke kept quiet, but his eyes made them feel like they had no idea about the truth of the current situation. His lips curved in a smirk as he said, What kind of adult goes full force when fighting against mere children? Dash. Isiki had enough, he dashed at him with a black rod in his hand and he gave a swift horizontal swing at Sasuke. Sasuke had no time to complete his sentence as he ducked under the attack. Everything happened in a split of a millisecond, assault and evasion. Well, that should be enough Sasuke thought to himself as he put out both his arms out, and released the chakra he had gathered in his Rinnegan. Almighty push. There was a confusing stillness for a moment before a powerful repulsion exploded and pushed them away in every direction. God, I love this jutsu. Never gets old. The Atsutsukis were blown off the platform as they were left at the mercy of the chaotic dimension, where time and space were in disarray. Sasuke immediately got to work as lightning came to life in his left hand. The lightning crackled with power and sharpness. But that was not enough as dark flames were mixed in the lighting and increased its intensity. An eerie purple. Smoke like chakra leaked out of Sasukeh backquote s left arm to further augment his attack. Sasuke quickly blitzes towards the artifact that was responsible for the whole thing, Karasuki. Sasuke shot his arm forward in a stabbing motion, and his eyes focused on the artifact. He noticed that it was surrounded by thick layers of chakra. 
that almost made it impossible to penetrate and Menetejikara. It was a space-time ninjutsu that Sasuke had used frequently in the canon to swap the places of objects, including himself and his enemies. But it was not limited to just that, with the right approach and training it could do more. The space between the artifact and his attack was ignored as the Chidori infused with a Matarasu immediately reached its target. The artifact was immediately shattered, unable to hold up against the attack. Sasuke leaped back to safety as the whole dimension began shaking and web-like cracks began appearing as if the whole dimension was made of glass. Still standing on the platform, Sasuke conjured the rib cage of his Susanoo as the whole dimension exploded in a bright array of light. Naruto looked around at the empty place where Sasuke and the Itsutsukis disappeared. Where are they? Then a blinding light appeared, which caused Naruto to cover his eyes. The light died out, and when Naruto opened his eyes again, he saw Sasuke who was crouching with his head down. Sasuke, Naruto called, alarmed. He quickly moved towards Sasuke and checked on his friend. What happened? Naruto asked, but Sasuke was silent. There were no Otsutsuki around. They did not return with him after he destroyed the artifact like he thought they would. That could only mean oh shit. Sasuke slowly stood up and Naruto could see millions of thoughts flashing in his eyes. Naruto reached out and grabbed his shoulder, and Sasuke turned his head to meet Naruto in the eye. A single sound left his mouth. Oops. Sasuke POV well. I fucked up big time. Naruto's worried voice repeatedly entered my ears, but my brain had no time to process it, so I only heard distorted noises. The Atsutsukis did not return with me, meaning they are somewhere out there in the endless expanse of time and space. They could be running around killing everyone from the past and changing the future right now. Oh no, let's try to stay positive, there is a chance of their death as well. I hope they die, I really hope they die. Please don't survive. Hoping for the best, I tried to sense the seal of the flying thunder god I put on them, and got a ripple of reaction. No, I had upgraded the seal to be able to sense and teleport to other dimensions. Since the Itsutsukis can travel dimensions, so I could sense them even though barely. It was akin to trying to sense something that's deep underwater. You can't see it, hear it, or feel it. But you know something was under there from the ripple at the surface. I could be sensing their corpse, but if the seal survived that fluctuation of time and space, I don't see the reason they wouldn't. Oh, this sucks. This really sucks. I felt a hand grab my shoulder. And I turned to the owner. I locked eyes with Naruto. And I can't bring myself to tell the hard truth to those blue orbs. So I just said what felt right at the moment. Oops. S-A-S-U-K-E-H back quote S-P-O-V the world celebrated. Finally, the world under the guidance of Sasuke Uchiha was able to fight off the alien invaders and save the whole world. Rejoice. As far as the people were concerned, the great mission in the land of snow was a success and the Itsutsukis fled from Earth to never return again. The cages and even Naruto were not aware of the truth of the situation. Only I knew how complicated and troublesome the situation really is. But what could I do except lie to them? Do I tell them that the Itsutsukis attempted to travel back in time and destroy the world when we were unprepared? Do I tell them that I managed to disrupt their plan and now the Itsutsukis are lost somewhere in time. No, that would cause unnecessary panic and fear. Unnecessary because even though fear and panic are a good emotion that motivates people to take action, it is only true if said action would make a difference. Whatever they do, it will be meaningless. Only I could do something. With my Rinnegan and the Seal of Flying Thunder God, I put on them, I might be able to follow them. Still, it only might be able to. Fuck, fate really threw a curveball at me. I cursed in the silence of the room. The moment I explained, lied to the others I retreated into my secret base and called up here since then like a hermit. I needed some time alone, so I left and haven't returned for two days. What to do? What to do? I repeatedly muttered those words, even though I already knew exactly what I needed to do. Prepare and follow the Atsutsukas immediately. Hunt them down before they change anything, and kill them all before they hurt others. It's as simple as that bar, but should I do that? Am I willing to risk it all? Bar for the first time since the incident that happened to me at the Valley of the End. I did not know. I genuinely had no idea right now. I always had a plan. I always had something I could look to for guidance. My canon knowledge, as much as they helped me, I see now that they had also worked to weaken me. I relied on them too much. No matter how much I acted as if it was just a bonus and not something I relied on heavily. I see now that that's not the case. I had been relying on them too much. The powers I had obtained could also be said to be the result of my canon knowledge. I had planned out how I was going to get strong from that knowledge. Even when I found out that my world was a little different from canon, I always sought my future knowledge for directions. It may not be completely trustworthy, 
but it has always provided me with a sense of peace and security. It gave me something to expect. But now, I was blind to my current situation. I don't know what to do. I don't have guidance. I don't know what to expect. Dot backquote. If I was to know exactly what I was up against, I could face anything. I would work and sacrifice to overcome it. I do not fear the powerful alien gods. I do not fear their numbers. But the unknown scares me. What would happen if I decided to go after them? What was waiting for me on the other side? I did not know. But the only thing I knew was that it was not as simple as it seemed. They were trying to simply go back to the past and change it. I don't think so. If that's what they wanted there was no reason at all for all of them to attempt to travel. Two of them could go back in time. While the others are staying to distract us. To make sure that everything was successful. Why would they all attempt to travel and leave themselves totally defenseless? For more than a month no less. Maybe they argued about whom to go with. Maybe they were all not as close as they seemed, and feared betrayal from each other. Too many possibilities, too many questions yet I have no answer, not even a clue. Nothing. My mind was like a busy street thoughts go here and there as contradictory opinions cross paths. I was confused about what to do. Bah, but after a while, I came upon a simple conclusion bar. What am L willing to do to protect everyone? How far am I willing to go to kill all your enemies? I am prepared to do everything S-A-S-U-K-E-H backquote S-P-O-V I teleported into a house and looked around. One could tell that a girl lived here from the decorations, which had a feminine touch to them. It was warm and welcoming. There was only one person in the house, and she revealed herself to me when she opened the door of her room. Sakura. Who? She said as her eyes narrowed in displeasure at the fact that someone sneaked into her house. But her eyes became wide and round again when she saw me. Sasuke. Her face lit up like a Christmas tree. With big and excited strides, she came to me and planted herself on my chest while her arms snaked around me for a hug. I also returned the gesture as I embraced her tenderly. Some of the stuff weighing on me seemed to evaporate as I gave myself time to relax between her arms. Even after some time, she seemed to have no intention to let go, so I had to be the one to separate us. I chuckled seeing her shy and happy face. I grabbed her hand and led her towards the couch. I sat down, and I pulled her onto my lap after I did that. She snuggled up to me greedily as I played with her soft pink hair. You seem to be in a good mood. I said, and she smiled. I couldn't see it, but I felt it. Yeah, she stayed still and silent for a while, before she turned around and straddled me. Her arms connected behind my neck as she gave me the pretty eyes. But you look troubled. She leaned down and placed a gentle kiss on my forehead. Tell me what's wrong. She tilted her head to the side. My hand snaked around her waist as I attempted to stick our bodies together forever. I released a sigh as I looked deeply into her green eyes. I have something to tell you third POV Sasuke told her everything about the situation. The Atsutsukis who are lost in time and even his decision to go after them. Sakura was silent throughout the explanation. She listened closely to whatever he had to say, while her eyes observed his unwavering dark eyes. When she heard that he was going to leave to hunt down the Atsutsukis, it scared her. She understood that it was necessary. She knew that he had to do it. A logical part of her agreed with what he was planning. But would you stay if I asked? Sakura asked as she called up and hugged him for dear life like a child begging her parents not to leave. I have to do this Sakura. His voice was firm, like metal. I is there no other way? Her voice was not firm. It was like liquid, it evaporates. Sasuke looked at her with emotion as he told her that there was no other way. Sakura didn't like that. She didn't like that he would be in danger. She didn back quotes he liked that he had to leave again. She didn't like that she might never see him again. But she knew she couldn't make him stay. Sasuke had responsibility and as a woman who loved him, she should support him with his decision instead of being annoying and making it harder for him. So she said, I understand. Tears pooled in her eyes as she said the words she did not agree with. Then she decided to be daring and make a demand to him. But you must return. Her voice came out more like begging than demanding. But that seemed to do the job as S-A-S-U-K-E-H back quote S eyes softened, and he patted her head. I will. You promise. I promise. Sakura's heart became a little lighter as she heard that, but it was not enough for her. She leaned in and pressed her pouty lips on his straight lips. She kissed him and, unlike her other kisses, she used her tongue. She was taking the lead, but Sasuke robbed that position from her when he kissed back. Her mind was cloudy as her body began heating up. Everything was blurry. And before she even realized it, they were naked, and she was grinding herself on his shaft. They still occupied the couch as their bodies stuck together like a magnet. She was rubbing on him and he was touching her everywhere. S-A-S-U-K-E-H tilde she rested her chin on his shoulder and whispered into his ear. He was going to leave soon. 
so she decided to do everything she wanted to him. Not only did she want him, but a part of her also desired to make sure he returned to her. She aligned her pussy above his manhood as she pulled back and looked at him with pleading eyes. Her expression was something a woman only makes when she greatly desires something from a man. Knock me up till the third POV. I think I am out of chakra, said Naruto, the reincarnation of Ashura, the man with the Yuzumaki lineage, the sage and the Jinchuriki of the Nine Tails. As he said, he was getting out of the chakra. What dot he dot fuck? Nonsense, you can do one more, Sasuke said nonchalantly as he unrolled a new scroll on the ground. The scroll contained complex Fuenjutsu seals, and if an expert were to look at it, they would be able to make out some meanings like store preserve trap etc. The place was dimly lit, and there was nothing much except some paintbrushes and shelves which contained rows and rows of books and files. At some corner, there were also different ninja tools. Sasuke and Naruto were currently inside SASUKEH backquote's secret base, and Naruto was tasked with filling out chakra storing scrolls, while Sasuke was closing, and putting away the scrolls Naruto had already filled. This had been going on for some time now. Sasuke had sought out Naruto and requested a favor. He asked for chakra, and it seemed like he wanted a lot. Naruto was clueless about why Sasuke needed to store this much chakra. He already had enough to blow up a village with the pure chakra alone. Why do you need all of these anyway? Naruto continued with his task even though he questioned why. He put his hands in the center of the seal and pushed out the Nine Tails Chakra and the seal absorbed it like a sponge. I hope you are not planning anything bad. Sasuke chuckled at that and said, don't worry about it. It's for something I can't quite disclose to you. Fine, fine, keep your secrets. Naruto said he was used to Sasuke being up to different things. So he tried not to be too nosy about it. His friend was always busy with missions or protecting the world from the shadows as he liked to call it. He was barely ever present in Kanoha and if he was, he would always hang around with Sakura. Just make sure to attend the wedding. It's two months from now, Naruto said. Sasuke appeared thoughtful as he said, I will try. Naruto sighed, he would appreciate it if his best friend was present at his wedding, but he knew how busy Sasuke was so he settled with that answer. It's done. Naruto fell on his butt as he released a heavy breath. Thank you Naruto. Sasuke picked up the scroll and closed it. The scroll shrinks in size, and Sasuke quickly puts it away in his ninja pouch. Sasuke was doing all this as a preparation for his travels. Dimension or time traveling required an absurd amount of chakra, so he needed to have access to an abundance of it. And even though he never experienced it, Sasuke was really afraid of being out of chakra. Sasuke was finished dealing with the chakra preparation, so he continued his other preparations. He teleported to OROCHIMAIU-S space where he met with Karen. He also informed her about the situation, and unlike Sakura, she simply accepted it with a smile, and wished him luck. But things also got a little spicy between them. But it was nothing special as their relationship was far more physical than what Sasuke shared with Sakura. Karen was simply a creature of sex, he would have never guessed. It was as if she was born to entice every masculine trait he had. After that, he did what he was there to do. He took everything he would need from the base which ranged from ninja tools, medicine, and even poison. Orochimaru was not there as he was holed up in his lab for a few months now. Sasuke wondered what the guy was up to. After the fourth shinobi world war he had focused on creating a perfect human instead of turning himself into a perfect human. He reckoned it would be easier to create one instead of changing himself into one. It had been more than once since Orochimaru asked Sasuke if he could have his sperm. And of course, Sasuke declined. Sasuke shook away the thoughts as he entered one of the rooms in the secret base. The inside was dimly lit as giant test tubes and machines could be seen inside. Sasuke walked towards one of the test tubes and he found a body inside it. If one looked closely they would see that the body inside was strikingly similar to Sasuke. It was his clone that Orochimaru had made in an attempt to create the perfect human. They had gotten into conflict when Sasuke first found out, and it ended with Orochimaru promising to never do this type of thing again. I have found a better way to accomplish my goals anyway, so I will never do it again. Orochimaru had said to him with an enlightened glint in his eyes. Sasuke had never heard from the man since. He moved closer to the test tube and fiddled with the control panel that was beside it. And the tube opened up and the body fell out. Sasuke caught it and stored the body in a scroll. These clone bodies may be failed experiments, but they were the perfect vessel for Sasuke to use the Rinnegan puppet control on. He went to the other six tubes and he only left the room after he had taken six bodies. Then he was done with OROCHIMAIU backquote S space. He said goodbye to Karen as he went to different places to collect what he needed. SASUKEH backquote SPOV, 
This feels more nerve-wracking than I thought. I said to myself as I stood on top of the Hokage Mountain. It was noon and the sun was at its peak. Its intense and nurturing heat shone upon the world without discrimination. It was hot, but it was not humid and the wind would blow frequently to cool off the heat. I overlooked the village of Kanoha as I stood upon the ridge of the mountain. The village was full of life as people went on about their days. Shopkeepers shouting to attract customers, small kids playing in the park, children running around in the school playground, and the many civilians who were busy with their own lives. I could see them all every corner of the village, including the couple who were making out at the alley. They lived unaware that their lives could change at a moment's notice. They are lucky to be under my protection. I turned away from the village and walked a few paces away from the edge as I prepared myself for the dimension slash time travel. I used my Rinnegan and using an absurd amount of chakra, I opened a purple swirling portal. I had to brute force through, as this was the first time for me. I observed the portal and saw how space was twisting along the ends. It was like a hole was punched through reality. I was not sure where this would lead me. I just connected it with the nearest mark I felt the mark of the flying thunder god I put on the Atsutsukas. I was uncertain whether this would work at all, or whether I would just be crushed by space and time or something. How much time will pass when I return? Would I even be able to return? Too many questions I wanted the answer to, too many things out of my control. Well, let's just hope for the best. My mind ran through all the preparations I made trying to figure out if I forgot anything but nothing came to mind. I swallowed the lump of fear stuck in my throat and convinced my body to perform the action it knew was stupid. A leap of faith I hated. I leaped through the portal and, yeah, unknown, Kanoha. Joe K-A-G-E backquote S office third POV. What the hell do you have against flowers? What did they do to you? Hashirama Senju spoke with passion as his face reflected the confusion and distaste in his heart. He sat on the H-O-K-A-G-E backquote S chair and his hands slammed on the table as he spoke. The room was new and fresh, with nothing much occupying the room, except the H-O-K-A-G-E backquote S chair and table. In front of him was a man with spiky long black hair and black eyes. The man was dressed in maroon armor with numerous metal plates forming protective guards along his chest, waist, shoulders, and thighs. The clothing under the armor was an indigo long-sleeved shirt with a knee-length mantle, pants, open two boots, and gloves. It was Madara Ichiha. This is not about the flowers. If you want, you can let the flowers grow in the Senju clan areas, but not on my clan compound. Madara spoke with intensity as if his right was violated. Madara had gone to the four newly formed ninja villages to assess their strength and to show how much stronger Kanova was. He had done so with Toborama, who had still not returned, as his job was to create bonds and treaties with the villagers. It was a strategy they had devised to maintain peace and keep the new village in check. Madara would visit newly formed villages to assert dominance, and after that Toborama would talk about a treaty to them. It basically is a threat, make peace with us, since you are going to lose anyway if we fight. After Madara had finished going through all the villages he had returned, but to his horror he found the village covered in beautiful flowers. Even his clan compound was not spared, as red flowers like roses bloomed everywhere. Suffice it to say, Madara Uchiha was not fond of the development as he immediately came to the Hokage before even changing out of his battle armor. But it's to unite the village and to lessen conflict among the clans. Hasarama explained, it has been proven that flowers make people happy. Madara looked at his old friend with judging eyes because he used flowers instead of his strength to try to maintain order. Thinking back, Madara noticed that different clans had different colors of flower, red for the Achiha, green for Aburum, yellow for Yamanaka, white for Hayiga, etc. Meanwhile, the village itself was a mixture of all colors, and thus making it more beautiful. Madara snapped. You were selecting theme colors for different clans while I traveled around the continent to make peace. What? Hasarama stood up, offended. I did other things too. The two strongest shinobi in the world began bickering like children. No one would believe it if they saw them. It was not usually how they acted, but somehow they would bring this childish side out of each other whenever they were together. I am telling you I will burn it down if you d-o-n back quote t disperse the flowers, Madara spoke in finality as he folded his arms. A gloomy aura leaked out from Hasarama at that as he hung his head low. You hate it that much? Huh? Madara was about to respond, but his body suddenly tensed up, and his arms unfolded and got ready to act. His demeanor took a serious turn as he turned around and looked towards a specific direction. What an immense amount of chakra, Madara commented as he sensed the chakra fluctuation at the border of the Land of Fire. It was not well known, but Madara was a powerful sensor. 
he was easily able to sense the chakra of someone from countries away. What he was sensing now was the fluctuation of chakra at the border, and after that fluctuation disappeared, a new chakra signature popped up. Whoever it was, he or she had a powerful chakra, and the quantity easily rivaled his. Madara focused on this new chakra signature as his mind tried to come up with the identity. As far as he knew, there were no other people who had this kind of powerful and huge chakra except for him and Hashirama. He should be aware of someone with this kind of power. But the signature felt foreign, meaning that such a powerful individual existed, but he never met him or her. Could it be a tail beast, Hashirama said, he was someone whose sensing ability should not be underestimated either. He was a sage, after all. He was not as vigilant as Madara. But the moment Madara tensed up, he also spread out his senses to find out what was wrong. It's unlikely. It's too small to be a tailed beast and too controlled. Madara pondered for a bit before he said, maybe someone from the Hoshigaki clan. They focused on the chakra as they wondered who it could be. They had not taken action for now, as the person was far away and did not seem hostile. But that changed as the chakra became aggressive. One could get information from sensing someone's chakra from their strength and even their affinity. Since chakra is a reflection of the spirit and the body, it also tells the nature of a person. The chakra they had sensed was controlled so they could not tell much. But now the same chakra erupted out of control, and they were finally able to observe it. Both of them felt it, the deep hatred that threatened to devour the world, the anger that was barely contained. They wondered how a chakra can be so dark, and how someone can be so bitter. That's not all, as the chakra erupted it sent a message of endless bloodlust. Midara and H-A-S-H-I-R-E-M a backquote s hair stood on end when the hatred and bloodlust washed over them. Hashirama. Midara called out to his friend as he immediately flashed away from his position, leaving an afterimage. Hashirama followed immediately as they both rushed with great speed towards the presence they felt at the border, which they now labeled as a threat. Midara and Hashirama who are at the pinnacle of power, briefly felt something that they thought they had forgotten, when the chakra erupted. Something which had stuck with them for the longest time before they finally grew out of it. It was an old friend. It was brief, but for a moment Hashirama and Madara felt fear. And that concludes this episode. If you enjoyed it, I'd seriously love it if you guys could leave a like on the video as it genuinely helps out so much, and it keeps me going, plus it takes only one second. That said, have a wonderful day. Catch you in the next one.